For spinal decompression, I can't say enough about the Teeter EP960 table. Um, putting the spine in inversion, as you know, with gravity, we're always locking down our spine. And these discs in here that cushion each vertebrae start to come, they start to become compressed. Sometimes they'll turn into a bulge, and when you get fluid spilled out in that spinal nerve, it starts to cause a tethering of these nerve roots. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing some spinal decompression where we're going to try to take pressure off each disc. As you know, over time, during the day, you lose about three quarters of an inch in height just because there's that much gravitational forces compressing all these discs. And by the time you're in your 80s or 90s, you've probably lost about two inches in height. And that just shows how much this gets, gets decompressed. And at night, they hydrate a little bit. But when you use the teeter inversion, EP960, what happens is you can actually decompress the spine every day and pull interstitial fluid back into these discs. And what we know, there's even one study that says that the herniated disc can actually move back into place when we do spinal decompression. So what we're going to do is we're going to get Fran with the easy, easy lock for the leg pieces. She's going to scoot into the inversion machine. And what Fran's going to do is she's going to just, you want to watch as she locks that in, make sure you'll hear it clip in. And she's going to slowly just use one arm, and you'll see how she can control easy inversion on this machine. Now, when you first do this, you're only going to go about 30. Fran's been doing this for months. So she started out at about 30 degrees of inversion. She started one to two minutes. And then she worked up to doing it at five or six minutes at about 45. Now we're at 60 degrees of inversion. So please work up to this place. Now, in order for these discs to hydrate and for fluid to get into the disc, we need to add some movement. But before we do that, if you remember the video, we had this L5, L4, L5 compression. We had to drop that sacral base down. If you remember the lower body nerve video, when the glutes weren't working, the QL, which is locking down these, the, these spinal nerve roots, was working over time. So a good exercise to start once you've done the inversion, Fran, I just want you to do a posterior pelvic tilt. And as she's doing that, she's taking that sacral base away from that bulge herniation or rupture, and she's getting some fluid back in here, but mostly she's decompressing the L5-S1, the sacral lumbar articulations, and stretching those iliosacral uh, ligaments. Now, the other thing Fran's going to do is she's going to rotate from side to side. Again, motion is going to get fluid back in those discs. Now, we've got spinal decompression. We've got motion going on, so we're getting decompression. We're getting fluid. We're getting hydration back in those discs. And then if you remember, Fran had a positive Eden's test. Uh, she had a positive costoclavicular test, and she had a positive Adams, Adson's test. So if she reaches back, she's stretching out her pec minor. What happens when she stretches out her pec minor, she's relaxing her rhomboids. What's also happening because of the inversion tables, the clavicles can actually lift up off of that first rib to decompress the subclavius artery and the brachial plexus of nerves. The other thing I like to do is I sort of like to add a small towel roll. Remember we restored the normal cervical curve, friends. So put this under your neck right in the middle of the neck. So it allows, that. remember that cervical curve, that normal lodotic curve. And now, you, again, we're decompressing all the discs. She's stretching out the pecs. And the last part Fran's going to do, giving her this you know, just three to five minutes she's worked up to. Now she's at like six minutes. I want you to put your fingers under your occiput, Fran. Now remember how the occiput was coming back because of the forward neck posture. Now if you do a little chin tuck and you get into the occiput, what that does is that opens up pressure off that basal artery and allows C1 to rotate more effectively over C2. So just hang for a little bit, Fran, and now sometimes you just want to do nothing. You just want to hang there for a while. Again, if you're going to do this, start at about 30 degrees, maybe one to two minutes, build up over weeks. And then the most important thing I can say, there's a lot of precautions and contraindications. Please check with your doctor. Read the instruction manual. Do not use an inversion table, especially if you have things like atherosclerosis, if you have things like hypertension, if you have things like high blood pressure, you've got glaucoma. There's a whole list of things. Extra hardware in your spine and back could be counterproductive. So please, before you invest in any inversion table, please consult with your doctor to make sure it's safe based on your medical and clinical conditions.